And now I am honored to introduce our speaker of the morning. I was getting ready to say Reverend Tony Hamilton. I don't think she's a reverend, <laughs> but she's a beautiful practitioner and one of the pillars of this um, beloved community. And um, I am just thrilled to introduce Tony Hamilton. Thank you, Evelyn. Good morning, family. Good morning. Wow. 2020. It is certainly one that will go down in the books. With great respect, I say that this has been quite a year. This has been a powerful year. This has been a year of dis disruption of life as we've known it. There's been great loss. We've lost loved ones, we've lost friends, we've lost our freedom, we've lost mobility, we've lost income. Some people have lost their businesses. Some people have lost their health, some people have lost their lives. There's certainly been a loss of security as we knew it. A loss of faith and trust for some. A loss of faith and trust in our agencies, in our organizations, and some of the departments of government that we rely on. We had a loss or a lack of goods and services. For the first time in my life, I walked into a supermarket and saw empty shelves, had trouble buying toilet paper. Who would have ever imagined? There's been unprecedented division in 2020 and also unprecedented camaraderie, I might say. There's been a loss of our ability to receive affection and love. Our lives have literally, literally been put on hold in 2020. Oh, stop everything paused. We've had our choices taken away, personal contact cut off, and human exchange and interaction. We haven't been able to share our energy in the same way and make no mistake, being able to be in the same physical space is important and powerful. We've been put in a position, I say in quotes, where we're suspect of each other and don't feel safe with each other. That's a really, mm, what adjective can I use? It ain't a good thing. Let me just say it that way. We have experienced victimization on so many different levels. Let me just like, like really say it. There's this invisible thing that could sneak in and get us and literally kill us, literally. And the news every day, we're seeing more and more information about who this thing got, how many people died. People were not able to be with their loved ones in their time of need. They were not able to say goodbye. And we've been isolated and alone. I keep hearing people say, I can't wait till 2020 is over. As if 2020 was an entity that made life what it was this past year. What did make life what it was this past year? What caused it? Now you may say, are you really asking me that question? I am. I am, and I'm asking it without apology. What caused the conditions that we experienced in 2020? How we looked at it to try and discern what the cause was, how we looked deeply, 
beyond the obvious, beyond the news, beyond the internals, did we introspect, self-reflect? What did your spirit tell you? Were you listening? What did your intuition say? Or did we allow someone else to inform us? Or are we just trying to get rid of it, get a vaccine, let something save us and move on? But there's a danger in focusing on or treating the symptom and not the cause. That danger is that we never find the cause, the solution. We simply deal with the symptoms. Now, how do we get here? In our teaching, we believe that our lives, our year 2020, is an outpicturing of our consciousness. So what do we bring to the table in 2020? We are responsible for what we bring into the room. It's something Reverend Michelle says to us over and over and over again. And to be honest, I for one have not liked to hear it. And in the beginning, I really didn't understand it. But we are responsible for what we bring into the room. And oftentimes it's what we didn't bring into the room that allows a problem to develop or to exist. But a problem comes with gifts. And so I've had the opportunity to pray for and speak with a lot of people this year as they walk through some of the challenges of 2020, as they dealt with COVID. I know someone who was very sick, had in quotes, one of the worst strains. And she shared with me that before COVID happened, she was in a situation where she was very unhappy, very unhappy, that she has not really been sick in her life before. But she surmises that out of this unhappy situation, her resistance was brought down and it may have allowed COVID to come in because we ask why one person and not another, yes? So she's promised herself that she will never ever again allow herself to be in an unhappy situation like that. That she will in fact take care of herself, honor herself and live the life that she deserves to live, which she normally had. So let's take a look. We were met with this experience called COVID. And how did we respond? Did anybody lose faith? Did anybody experience fear? I know I did. Uh, I did. Did we get angry? Did we feel powerless? Did we give up our power? Were we proactive? Do we take vitamins, exercise, you know, like really try and build up our immune system and, and do what we could to take care of ourselves and protect ourselves? Did we mask up? Did we at least do the things that we know were reasonable to benefit ourselves and take care of ourselves? Did we move forward with our lives do we live as if we know who we are and what's in us? Or did we meet it with victim consciousness? Did we invite it in by so doing? Or did we stand against it? And what are we doing now? How are we contributing to getting rid of COVID? And you may say to yourself, what can I do? 
I, I, I'm only me. I, I, it's a virus. It's bigger than me. I didn't cause it. I'm not a scientist. Nobody even knows where it came from. Or do they? But what can I do? I remember one of the first services that I came to at CSL. It was in the room downstairs um, in Montclair. Um, someone got up and they gave a testimony. And I won't mention the person's name, but this person mentioned that she hadn't been feeling well. And she went to the doctor and the doctor told her she had cancer. And she said, that's a lie. She said it so strongly that when she said it, I was startled. And then I wondered, how could she say that? How could she be so sure? What do we do when we're faced with something? And of course, she went on to say that time went by and she went back and she had another test and there was no cancer. None. Because she made a choice. She took a stand. She did her spiritual work and lived her life. She absolutely refused to be complicit. So what's the solution? Always and only God. That's the solution. Our teaching tells us that God is love, that God is for me, not against me. That it lives and moves and has its being in me. That it's part of me and I'm part of it. That there's nothing too big or too small for God because God is all powerful, all knowing and everywhere evenly present. God is available to me and God always says yes. So what happens? How do I utilize this? What happens when I pour love into my life? When I'm kind and generous, when I'm awake, when I'm aware, when I'm thoughtful and strong and true to myself and to the immutable laws of life that I know exist, that I work with every day? What happens when I live from the place of health and wholeness and the highest and best for everyone? What happens when I do my inner spiritual work and stay connected with God? When I choose to work with spiritual principles and to be my best self, to be a stand for what I want in the world. You see, 2020 gave us gifts also. We saw an incredible rise in social and political consciousness unprecedented camaraderie, organization, and mobilization, concerted action. People took a stand. We saw people marching in the streets and doing things like we have not seen in, in well, it, for, in, I was about to say in our generation, but for some people, it was their generation if you were alive in the 60s. <laughs> People recognize that silence implies consent and there was exceptional commitment and sacrifice, especially from first responders. People realize that if I do nothing, then I have to live with what others do. So in our teaching, we take responsibility so that we can be a positive influence, so that we can be empowered, so that we can stand in our power and stand for something. I'm a willing vessel and I allow spirit to move through me and live through me. I'm a tool for the divine presence that always is no matter what conditions are going on in the world. Those conditions are generally caused by not being in alignment with spirit, by not knowing and understanding who we really are and that we are co-creating our lives. So I own it. 
I do my own work and I figure out what's mine to do. Then I'm contributing energetically to cure what ails us all, be it victimization, poverty, prejudice, climate change, or COVID. I'm a child of the divine presence. It lives through me. I matter. I have myself to contribute. I can make a difference by who I am. So what if you decided about COVID, its underlying causes in 2021? We are responsible for what we bring into the room. What will you bring into 2021? Let's treat. So what I know is that there is a divine power and presence that I call God, creator, spirit. It is absolutely perfect, whole and complete. It is all powerful, all knowing and everywhere evenly present. And it is love. It is motivated by love. It expresses as love. It creates and everything that it creates, it creates out of love. And so we see beauty, we see harmony, we see balance, we see order, we see perfection. We see the ongoing, ever unfolding, expanding expression of this in life, in all of life. And we know that it expresses in and through and as each one of us. We know that it is always available to us. It is always responding to us and providing us with everything that we require. If there is lack or limitation of any kind, if there is anything that is untoward and not for our highest good, it comes from not knowing the truth. It comes from a misunderstanding. It comes from being misaligned and disconnected with this power and presence. But I affirm that this is not the truth of our being. The truth is this divine presence expresses in and through and as us and it can do anything by means of each one of us. And this is always, always available. And so I affirm with this word that regardless of conditions, the possibility for health, the possibility for wholeness, the possibility for freedom, the possibility for creative self-expression, the possibility for prosperity and abundance and cooperation and joy and laughter and beauty and peace is always available, always expressing. And we simply have to choose. We simply have to decide and allow ourselves to be guided, allow ourselves to be utilized by that presence that I call God. And what I know is when I allow myself to be utilized by that presence that I call God, things unfold more wonderfully, more magically, more magnificently than I dreamed of. That my intention, my hope, my desire, my longing for goodness expands exponentially when I open myself and allow the divine presence to utilize me. And there is nothing I have to fear. There is nothing I have to fear. I simply turn my attention to the one and say yes. And so I release this word into the law 
knowing that I'm divinely guided and inspired, knowing that I'm divinely empowered, knowing that there is always a way where there appears to be no way. And it is the divine presence that I call God within that makes it so. Please close with me. And so it is.